Next we want to talk about adjusting your feeder house belt and making the proper tension on the belt. First thing you want to do is loosen this idler bolt, lower the idler down. The next thing you want to do is on the inside up here, there are three, three nuts that you'll need to loosen. And then you'll use this turnbuckle to push the upper feeder house variable speed backwards. Uh, the thing you don't want to do is jump on the belt and get it loose and then raise the idler up because in effect what you're doing is reducing the contact on the torque drive and you're going to have more belt slippage. So to adjust it, again, loosen your idler, loosen the three nuts on the inside in here, use your turnbuckle to push the upper belt backwards, and then um, raise your idler just to take the slop out of the belt. Now you know you have it properly tensioned um, when you either have an eighth inch shiv gap in here or when the feeder house is slowed all the way down, it should be running about 520 RPMs. That's how we adjust our feeder house belt. Next, we want to talk about adjusting our feeder house chain. What you're looking at now is a 2009 model machine. Um, what they've gone to is a spring-loaded um, idler system, and really all you have to do is maintain the proper tension on the spring. There's a washer right here, and that washer just needs to be in the notch on the gauge, and your, your feeder house is now properly adjusted. You want to make sure and do that on both sides. Uh, if you have a 2008 model machine or previous machine, uh, it will still be the, the slide and the turnbuckle style that we've had for several years. Uh, so any 08 machine, you're still going to look in the you're going to look in the top of the feeder house through the inspection door, and then adjust the slots until the chain is just coming off of the wear strip in the in the feeder house. But all 09 new 09 machines will have this spring load adjustment. And now on adjusting your uh, feeder house chain here. Um, basically your adjustment's going to be done right here. You're going to loosen this this center nut right here and then basically to tighten your tighten your feeder house chain you're going to you're going to use these two two nuts right here and basically just drive this eye bolt forward and then lock it back in place. Now to check to see if it's tight just reach in right here at your at your inspection door and the the chain itself should be coming right off the wear strip here right about the middle of the door and then just be sure also if you do move your feeder house drum to recheck that if you go from corn to beans. Next we want to talk about adjusting your feeder house drum height. It needs to be in the up position for corn which is now where it's currently located with the lever pointing up and it needs to be in the down position for beans. The way you do this you pull out on the ring which releases the locking pin and then pull back on the handle all the way back until it's pointing to the back of the reverser. Conversely if you want to go back to corn Many times it is helpful to have someone lift up on the drum while you're making this adjustment, pull out on the, on the locking pin ring, and then lift the handle back up to where it's pointing straight up and down, and that's how you'll adjust your drum. Now you want to make sure and do that on the left and right side to make sure your drum is even. But next we want to focus our attention on the multi-coupler. Uh, this area of the machine is where we attach all the hydraulic and electrical functions on the head to the combine. Uh, this area is sensitive to dirt and debris, so before you attach the header, uh, to this area you want to make sure and wipe this off with a rag and then also wipe off the header header coupler as well. Once you slide it on you'll insert the roll pins on the header side right here. Once you insert that you pull out on this locking pin, pull down on it and that will lock the multi-coupler in place. Keep in mind this should not require a tremendous amount of force. Uh, if you apply too much force and there's something binding you will shear this shear pin right here now there are some spares on the opposite side of the multi-coupler that you can replace them with. More than likely what's happened is either the pins that lock the header to the combine down on the front of the feeder house have either um, are mismatched with the head or there's some dirt or debris is built up in that pin area. Uh, but if you do shear that you'll have to realign the cable, the, the cable right here, reinsert your shear pin, remove the obstacle and then you should be able to move it again. Uh, but again, just something to keep in mind is make sure that you keep this area free from dirt and debris. Now we're back on the left hand side of the machine to adjust the rotor speed. In most conditions uh, for corn and beans, you're going to be able to run the rotor in the slow side, which this handle will be pushed in. Now to adjust it, you just pull out or push in on the handle. You might have to wiggle the shiv up here just a little bit to get it to fall into place but in is the low side which will run to about 550 RPM and then out is the high side and that will run from roughly 300, 350 up to approximately 1000 RPM. Here we're looking at the chopper speed adjust. 
you have two pulleys on the bottom and you have two on the top. You, the big pulley and the small pulley together are the fast speed and that's where you want to be for soybeans. The small pulley on the top and the big pulley on the bottom, which is the inside, is where you want to be for corn. Um, to adjust it, you simply raise the chopper with the switch on the left hand side. That will raise the chopper and loosen the belt so off of the idler. Then you can change the belt to the desired position, then go back to the switch and re-lower the chopper. Alright, an important change you got to keep in mind whenever you go from corn to beans, be back here on your chopper. Um, you're going to be sure you want to go, basically this will be the, the slow speed here with the big pulley on the, on the, the driven shaft um, for the chopper. And you're just going to take this handle, this is going to take your, your, belt, your pressure off your belt and move out here into the, the uh, faster speed for soybeans and also move it on your upper, your upper uh, pulley also. Um, and as far as your knife bank goes, you're going to want to move that all the way out for corn. Uh, usually put it in just a little for beans to start and then kind of adjust as far as uh, how much residue you want from there. A lot of guys are on about halfway in on, uh, on soybeans. So that's the change you have to make back here on your chopper. Here we're looking at the cob deflector. What the cob deflector does is as the chopper spins, it will try to throw cobs back up to your chaffer and sieve element, and that can bend the little fingers on your chaffer. Uh, so what this will do, this is a panel that hangs down about like so, and it will knock those cobs down and keep it from getting thrown back forward. So in the corn position, you need to have this under the corn uh, decal here in the up position. The way I adjust that, I pull out on the locking pin, and I move it from one position to the other. Now for beans uh, or wheat, you'll want to have it in the down position. You move the arm down and it locks in place. But for corn, we definitely have to make sure and put it back up here or we could have damage to our chaffer. Here we're looking at the bottom of the clean grain elevator. Now it'll be similar for the tailings elevator. Um, you want to make sure that your clean grain elevator chain is adjusted correctly. And to check that, you slide the chain back and forth on the sprocket, but you should not be able to pull it away from the sprocket. If you cannot slide it back and forth, it's too tight and it will stretch your chain prematurely. But just make sure you can slide it back and forth, but you cannot pull it away from the pull from the sprocket. Now we're looking at the feed accelerator. Uh, the feed accelerator needs to be in the slow position when you're in the corn, when you're harvesting corn. Uh, there's a decal here to show you that the small pulley on the top and the big pulley down front uh, is the slow position. To change that, you take this lever. You lift it up and out of its position to release the tension on the belt. Then you move the pulley to the proper position. The outside is the corn or the slow position. The inside would be for beans and the fast position. Once you get the belt moved, retension your belt. That's how you change the feed accelerator for corn. Adjusting the tension on your feeder house drive chain, you've got two bolts that you'll want to loosen here. They're 24 millimeter. Uh, loosen this one and this one and you'll move this one to the top and uh, to loosen the chain if you need to clear the debris or, or change sprockets for whatever reason then once you once you get ready to adjust it you'll put this one back in the in the lower hole and then in here in behind here there's some holes where you can stick a punch or a screwdriver and you can push forward on this one in the slot once you get it up to where this chain is just barely riding off of the plastic wear, ship, wear strip uh, then retighten your hardware and that's how we adjust our feeder house chain now I want to talk about the feeder house drive chain speed. We've got two sprockets on the 70 series. We've got the large sprocket and the small sprocket. For all applications, including corn and beans, we want to be on the inner sprocket, which is the small sprocket. The outer sprocket is only for heavy wheat or large grassy crop conditions. So on, on the 70 series corn, on the 70 series uh, combines, you want to make sure you're on the small sprocket for corn and beans. And that's how we adjust, or that's the setting we need to be on uh, on the 70 series.